Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. In this episode, I want to do something a little different. I want to give you some follow-up impressions for a product that we just reviewed on one of our sites. In this case, the Bowers & Wilkins 805D4, which was reviewed by Hans Wetzel on SoundstageUltra.com. We published the review on October 15th. Basically, I want to give you a second take. But before I get into my impressions, I want to say I'm going to keep it brief because I largely agree with what Hans wrote in the review. So to get all the details and all the little sonic subtleties that he describes, go see the review, read that online. I'm not going to get into that here. Instead, I want to give you kind of my overriding impressions. The first things I want to talk about are the appearance and the build. Now, this is the Bowers & Wilkins Company's flagship stand mount speaker, and it looks every bit the part. As far as the appearance goes, though, it could be polarizing. The industrial design is dramatic. I like to think of it as muscular. And I could see people saying, well, that's a little too much for my room, but I loved it and I think a lot of people will. Just has a real flair to it that's really identifiable. The build quality, nobody's gonna deny. It is fantastic. The mix of materials here, primarily a wood cabinet. There's aluminum on the back. Across the top here, around the mid-range woofer and this entire tweeter tapered tube is aluminum as well. Leather on top, nobody's gonna deny it is built fantastic. It's also built in the Bowers & Wilkins factory in England. It's a real luxury piece. The speaker's configuration is a pretty conventional two-way design. It has a one-inch tweeter and a six and a half inch mid-range woofer with a port below it. The port is used to augment the bass frequencies. It's important to point out that Bowers & Wilkins designs and manufactures its own drivers. No off-the-shelf drive units in this loudspeaker or anything the company makes. It's also important to point out a couple of the materials. The tweeter has a diamond diaphragm. That's the D and D4, and diamond has been used in the 800 series loudspeakers for many years now. The mid-range woofer has a cone made of what they call continuum. Now that's a proprietary material. They don't tell you what it is. It came in in the 800D3 series and it replaced Kevlar, which was ubiquitous in their loudspeakers for decades. So let's get into some of the sonic highlights, beginning with the bass, which I found pretty deep given that this is a two-way stand mounted design, but mostly powerful and well controlled. There was real slam there from low to high volume levels and that impressed me. That said, you can find speakers that are a little warmer and fuller sounding in the bass, as well as ones that maybe extend a little bit deeper in the bass, but I'm not gonna knock the bass performance of this loudspeaker. I like tight, fairly deep, well-controlled bass, and the 805D4 delivered that. As you move up in frequency, I found that the bass transitioned seamlessly into the mid-range. And unlike older Bowers and Wilkins speakers, I had owned a number of them in the past, which almost always had a forced in-your-face mid-range. The mid-range on this loudspeaker was very natural, very transparent, meaning I could hear into the music really well, quite neutral, definitely not too upfront, definitely not too recessed. But as you move up and up and up in frequency into the treble region, that's where some controversy with the sound of this speaker comes out. There's no doubt that the treble region, which is primarily the responsibility of the tweeter, is elevated. And that's not only reflected in the listening, but also in the measurements we took. And Hans found this as well. But he said he didn't find the speaker bright. And I have to tend to agree with that after I listened to it for a very long time and with a wide variety of music. But for me, it did sound prominent, quite prominent, in fact. So what does a prominent treble sound like? Let me relate it to music. Through these speakers, I listen to a lot of Bruce Coburn's albums, and Bruce Coburn's albums have plenty of acoustic guitar. And the top end of his guitar, the higher frequencies, were simply louder, more there, more obvious, more in the room. Likewise, in various songs, cymbals were louder, more there. Was this a good or bad thing? As Hans pointed out in the review, a lot depends on the type of music you're listening to and the recording of it, and that I can agree with. That's because with some music, the speakers actually made it more exciting to listen to. It elevated the top end a bit and brought out a few details. And I thought, well, this is really, really fun to listen to. With other music, particularly music that's bright sounding inherently, that could be a problem because it could tip too much treble. But I did play Lana Del Rey's White Dress from Chemtrails Over the Country Club. And this is one of the brightest sounding recent recordings I've purchased, 
And I would say it was a little bit on the edge, but I didn't mind it because also I found that prominent treble was based partially on volume level. At low to medium volume levels, having that extra high frequency sparkle wasn't always a bad thing. Crank up the volume high though, and it could be a bad thing because suddenly all the frequencies come up and now the high frequencies are really loud and that's not such a great thing. But at low to medium volume levels, it kind of lent a more exciting sound to the music for the most part and something that was obvious, yet in many ways hard to criticize. I also noticed something else with the overall voicing of the speaker, which has something to do with this treble balance. At lower and moderate volume levels with the way the bass is presented, very tight and controlled, and the mid-range has a neutral sound and good clarity. And that elevated top end at those moderate and lower volume levels, I could really hear into the music really well, better than with many speakers. And that was a really great thing. Hans found the speaker very transparent sounding. And when I was playing the pair at those lower volume levels, I can see why. They got out of the way of themselves. There was no kind of telltale cues that the sounds are coming from the cabinet. And they really revealed the details in the recordings from the lowest frequencies the speakers could reproduce right up through the highs. It was just really clear and easy to hear. But once again, increasing the volume level changed things. When I played many of those tracks at much louder levels, those details in the frequencies that were much easier to hear at lower to moderate volume levels became almost too easy to hear, too in my face, too elevated. But that wasn't always the case. It really depended on the music. And that's something Hans stressed in his review and I can't stress enough as well. I call the 805D4 definitely a speaker with a sound. It is not designed as a neutral transducer, one that displays all those frequencies for you evenly. It has a sound. It has a Bowers and Wilkins sound. This elevated treble has been in their speakers for a number of years now. I believe it's deliberate and I believe it's to make the speaker perhaps more exciting, more immediate, maybe the perception of more detail. I'm not sure, but it's obviously something they do on purpose with their speakers and this one displays it in abundance. Now, is that sound right for you? It's like saying, is the appearance right for you? These type of speakers where they have a sound, don't take my word for it. Don't take Hans's word for it. Take your own word for it. Go listen to the loudspeaker, bring a wide variety of music, and also play it at varying volume levels. You might find it's not for you at all, or you might find it's perfect for you. It's one of those speakers you really have to try out. Thank you for watching.